So how far can AI take us in domains like scientific progress, new discoveries? Is it only capable of trying to optimize things that humans have already built, or is it capable of creating its own new discoveries? Well, let's take a look at one thing published by Google DeepMind that seems to suggest that it's able to produce its own startling new discoveries. So AlphaDev discovers faster sorting algorithms. Now, we'll look at what that means in just a second, but it's important to understand what, that these processes run probably trillions of times per day in our world right now. So even a small improvement, a small optimization, as it gets rolled out over all the technology, all the computers, all the little chips that we have across the globe, that makes a massive difference. So new algorithms will transform the foundations of computing. So as we increase our demand for computing power, we are kind of approaching how far hardware is going to take us. Microchips are approaching their physical limits. There's only so much that you can change and manipulate atoms before it kind of stops working. And so they say, in our paper published today in Nature, we introduce AlphaDev, an artificial intelligence system that uses reinforcement learning to discover enhanced computer science algorithms, surpassing those honed by scientists and engineers over decades. So really fast, what is sorting? So sorting is a method of how we organize data. It's something that's been around for a long, long time. You know, it's things like alphabetizing three letters, arranging five numbers from biggest to smallest, etc. Some of the earliest examples like is alphabetizing books by hand in a library. And then 1950s and on, now we have computer science algorithms doing the sorting and organizing, etc. So for example, here's a collection of random numbers. It sorts it into one, two, three, four, five. That's basically what it's doing. Now, human intelligence and innovation, it took us really far with this. Contemporary algorithms took computer scientists and programmers decades of research to develop. They're so efficient that making further improvements is a major challenge. And so AlphaDev uncovered faster algorithms by starting from scratch rather than refining existing algorithms and began looking where most humans don't, the computer's assembly instructions. What's interesting here is you see some parallels between this and various AIs that play chess, etc. So for example, for the earlier AI chess systems, we used to kind of give it some hints about what we thought is the way it should play. For example, we told it about how much each piece is worth. So for example, the pawn is worth one point, the knight is worth three points, the bishop is also worth three points, etc. Now, Alpha Zero, which is another sort of similar AI that's made by Google's DeepMind, it also started learning from scratch humans weren't influencing how to play. So we didn't try to give it hints. We didn't try to say, well, here's what we learned so far. It started from zero. And it developed a, a different idea of how much each piece was worth. So for example, here are the piece values according to alpha zero. So we thought that this is worth one, these are three, the rook is five, and the queen is nine. And certainly we were close, but this alpha zero, that's by the way, better than any human player on earth, it thinks it, it's a little bit different. We're a little bit off. And certainly, who are we to question it? So AlphaDev, again, looking where most humans don't, the computer's assembly instructions. And so they say here that we believe many improvements exist at this lower level that may be difficult to discover in a higher level coding language. So for those who are not familiar, basically a lot of, let's say, software developers use these higher level coding languages, C++, Python, etc. Those go into the compiler and these use assembly language. And what does that mean? So that's basically a simplified language that's used by machines. You can think about it like if you're talking to a dog, you're not going to use full sentences. You're going to say sit or fetch or something like that. Similar to this, the computer is going to understand those simple commands. So for example, one might be MOV for move, move something from here to there, or ADD for add, add these two numbers. And so the problem with it is it's a lot harder for humans to read and write. But it's also a lot more powerful because it allows you to tell the CPU exactly what to do. So AlphaDev is based on AlphaZero, our reinforcement learning model that defeated world champions in games like Go, Chess, and Shogi. With AlphaDev, we show how this model can transfer from games to scientific challenges and from simulations to real-world applications. What's interesting here is they're making this AI basically play games similar to chess and Go, which is what it was trained on, what it was sort of accustomed to doing, and now making a game out of improving assembly language. So to train AlphaDev to uncover new algorithms, we transformed sorting into a single player assembly game. At each turn, AlphaDev observes the algorithm it has generated and the information contained in a central processing unit, the CPU. Then it plays a move by choosing an instruction to add to the algorithm. So instead of moving, let's say, a pawn to a certain square, it outputs this assembly code. So for example, MOV for moving something, right? 
and it adds it to the algorithm. So this is like pawn to e4. And so as the algorithm is built one instruction at a time, AlphaDev checks that it's correct by comparing the algorithm's output with the expected results. For sorting algorithms, this means unordered numbers go in and correctly sorted numbers come out. We reward AlphaDev for, for both sorting numbers correctly and for how quickly and efficiently it does so. AlphaDev wins the game by discovering a correct, faster program. Isn't it interesting how games are like the backbone of how we train AI? All those hours I spent playing video games, it wasn't a waste of time. It was getting me ready for this. And so these algos are now available in the sort of standard sorting library used by millions of developers and companies around the world. So these little upgrades, they do have a huge impact. Even if you do small incremental changes, you know, you improve it by 1%, 10%, it, it's huge. Here, they improved it by up to 70% faster for shorter sequences. Things like this could be run trillions of times a day if you're looking at the entire world. Another thing that was interesting about this is that, I mean, here's the code that it did. So here's the actual output. This is how the original was and the move that it tried that worked really well. And so what's interesting is that they called it the sw swap and copy move. AlphaDev skips over a step to connect items in a way that looks like a mistake, but it is actually a shortcut. So when humans look at some of these moves or some of these breakthroughs, whatever you want to call them, in the beginning, they might think it's a mistake. They don't understand it. They think something's wrong, something's off. And they even compare this one to AlphaGo's move 37. Now there's this... Uh, AlphaGo the movie, which is a pretty good thing to watch if you're interested in this stuff. So it's free. It's from Google DeepMind. It's on YouTube. And so it's playing one of the greatest players of Go. Here's that person. He's outside taking a break. Meanwhile, AlphaGo makes their move. And uh, this move is weird. This is move 37, what they're referencing in the blog post. And people don't really get what it's doing. Notice how they're kind of like looking around. They're not quite sure. They're looking back and forth. They're like, is this, is this? No, that can't be right. This is, this doesn't go there. That's something's off. I thought it was, it was a mistake. I thought it was a mistake. When I see this move, for me, it's just it's a big shock. What? Normally human, we never play this one because it's bad. It's a bad move. It's a mistake it's move. It's just bad. We don't it, know it's why. Up. It's bad. But it's a little bit high. Yeah. It's fifth line. Normally, you don't make a soda here on the pit line. Uh, so coming on top of a fork live zone is really unusual. Yeah, that's an exciting. This is move. one of the developers. I, you see, he's I kind of smiling. an original move here. One of the Google that's the kind of Alpha move Zero's developers uh, that you, that you play Go. So for. he kind of hurries behind the scenes to see like hey. uh, what happened. Was there a mistake? What did this thing do? Interesting. Oh, this fifth line shoulder hit because uh, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I don't really know if it's a good or bad move at this point. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen move 37. So I actually had to poke around in AlphaGo to see what AlphaGo thought. And AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. AlphaGo said there was a one in 10,000 probability that move 37 would have been played by a human player. So it knew that this was an extremely unlikely move. It went beyond its human guide and it came up with something new and, and creative and different. So oh, yes. it did, it, it beat the player. I think so it was I something like five teacher. zero. I admit that it was a very clear loss on my part. Of course, this was a big deal because a lot of people didn't think that AI could be humans at this game. A lot of people were kind of crushed. There was a lot of, a lot of emotions involved, but what's interesting is that sort of move 37 kind of shows this sort of alien intelligence that this AI has. It does moves that we look at and say, well, this has to be a mistake. This is bad. This is stupid. And yet later, only later, we understand how brilliant and foundational and important that move was, how pivotal it was. We are artists, you know. We play our best right. for go. Right. So please gentle with Lisa Darling. He's very, very good players, great players. I am in the room. I see this though. He won't win. He, he, he tried everything. We just, we can't. I, I mean, you can see how devastated they are and how upset this person is. This, by the way, is, um, so he's the CEO of DeepMind, Demis Hasabis. And so he's a really smart guy. He was uh, like the best chess player in the world under 13 when he was a, a kid. And there's tons of other things about him where you're like, okay, this guy's brilliant. And so a lot of these new technological breakthroughs with AI, 
he's behind it. He's behind sort of the applications, Alpha Zero, Alpha Go, uh, Alpha Fold, which solved the uh, protein folding problem, which was like this breakthrough in biology, like one of the biggest in 50 years with that specific thing that's now getting applied to genetics and the genome and all sorts of stuff. So we're probably going to be seeing a lot more from Google DeepMind and, uh, and this fella as well. Anyway, so this is the move that it made that was so brilliant. I mean, I don't really know exactly what it is. And that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult for humans to, to change this because of how sort of tedious and meticulous you have to be to really understand all the intricacies of it. And that's why it's so good for something like this to be able to optimize it because it'll make moves that we can't see. Another breakthrough was um, in hashing. So hashing is a fundamental algorithm in computing used to retrieve, store, and compress data. So AlphaDev has demonstrated its ability to generalize a, and discover new algorithms with real-world impact. We see AlphaDev as a step towards developing general-purpose AI tools that would help optimize the entire computing ecosystem and solve other problems that will benefit society. AlphaZero could start in the morning playing completely randomly, and then by tea it would be superhuman level. By dinner, it would be the strongest chess entity there's ever been. So that's that's Demis Hassabis again, CEO of DeepMind. So he's like the super smart guy behind a lot of this. Best entity there's ever been. After about eight or So nine. if you didn't catch that, so it can start as kind of good by breakfast and by afternoon is the best chess entity that's... Now as it was strong enough been. to be able to go out and defeat Stockfish, the incumbent world champion, a program which was vastly stronger than Deep Blue, the program which had previously defeated Kasparov. So I called up my longtime friend, Matthew Sadler and Natasha Reagan, my two friends from when I used to play chess myself. Yeah, so, he so I knew that they were ranking very number two in the world in for players under 13. System. And it did cause a big stir actually amongst the chess players. These were very exciting games, very attacking games. I could see that Alpha Zero was trying something yeah. different. It's like this young kid from deepest Russia sort of arriving and then suddenly beating everyone. It doesn't have an engine like style, plays like a human on fire. So I'm curious what everybody's thinks about this because there's still people out there saying that this is just, you know, ChatGPT is just a bunch of scripts that it's reading off, that some of the stuff is just a bunch of databases. They're trying to reduce it to just something that's very like logic based, like if this, then that. But it really is beginning to get harder and harder to try to define things like intelligence and reasoning and creativity and innovation. It's harder to define them in a way that sort of like includes the things that we humans do and excludes the things that AI and neural networks do. It seems to be like there's just a more and more of an overlap between the two. And now we're seeing things like AI that's coming out that's being trained on the human genome, which DNA is basically this vast data that we kind of don't really know what a lot of it is. We know certain parts here and there, we're able to modify it here and there, but it's we're barely scratching the surface. And these these AIs, these neural networks, their whole, the, the thing that they're really good at is sort of taking these vast quantities of data, of just raw data, and trying to figure out some patterns that we can't even see. I mean, that's what the protein folding problem saw, showed. That's what Alpha Zero, Alpha Go is. That's what this Alpha Dev seems to be doing. A lot of smart people in the space are saying that at some point, sort of human technological progress the amount of stuff that we're contributing to it, it sort of stops and it gets continued by these AI systems. You know, the question is like, at what point are we going to be giving Nobel Prizes to AIs instead of humans? At what point is it going to be responsible for the vast majority of scientific progress that occurs? How close are we to that point? I mean, at what point do we kind of maybe not become obsolete, but what, at what point is it doing a lot more innovation and creative thinking and technological progress than, than we're capable of. That day might not be that far away. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more awesome AI content. Join me in this AI revolution. We're witnessing something amazing happen. It's the arrival of general artificial intelligence. And I hope you stay with me for this ride. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching.